So in order to regenerate the enemies, I need to base it on something. So I'm going to base it on the fact that three enemies got killed. So I need to keep track of that somehow. So I'm going to create a custom attribute in my game. I'll call it killed enemies and we'll add to that score every time an enemy gets killed. And then inside of the hero, we'll check on that number. And if it's greater than equal or greater than three, it will force the regeneration of three brand new uh, spawned actors of the enemy. So let's start by going to the game attributes and I'll add a new attribute, integer, and I'll double click it to rename it. I'll call it killed enemies. Okay, killed enemies. And it does default to zero. All right, so now I have a place to store that information. So let's see here. I'm currently in the hero, so let me go to the enemy. And I'll just close some of these up here. Killed by bullets. Okay, so when a bullet hits the enemy, it gets destroyed. It plays a sound. So let's add a third behavior under killed by bullets, which will be to add one to this attribute. Okay, so we're actually going to be changing an attribute. So change attribute. And which attribute? I'm going to go down and search here. It will be the game attribute called killed enemies and we'll set it to whatever its current value is plus one so we have to do this all in the expression editor here attributes game killed enemies and then in here we're gonna manually type in plus one. So that means whatever the current value is, if it's zero and we add one, it'll be one. If it's two, it'll become three and so on. And very importantly, check the green checkbox to submit that. Okay, so now we have a way to keep count of how many enemies get killed. So we'll go back to the hero and we'll actually create the rule that based on the fact that killed enemies is equal to three or higher, it will respawn three new enemies. So let's go over to the hero. And it's a lot here. It's sort of a working in three pieces fitting together. Hit by enemy. Okay, we'll close that. And we'll make a new rule. I'll call it regenerate enemies. Regenerate enemies. Okay. And uh, the condition will be to check the value of killed enemies. So we're going to type in attribute. If, which attribute? The attribute called killed enemies under game is greater or equal to three. So if it's three or above, it will do the following, which will be to spawn some new actors. So under the do window, I'm going to do three different spawned actors. Spawn actor, which actor? The enemy. And here we're going to play with positions. Now, I've done this a couple of times, so through some trial and error, I'm going to cut to the chase here and give you some positions that will work. But normally you would try some random numbers or, you know, doing your best guess, testing it out and then tweaking it maybe once or twice. But I'm going to go with the uh, vertical position, 50 pixels from the left and uh, 500 pixels from the bottom. So this will be one. And I'm going to say relative to scene, relative to scene. Okay, so that's one spawned actor. So I'm going to duplicate two more of those by alt clicking and dragging. I have to be very careful though here. Very careful, alt click and drag. And let me just scroll up here and just change these locations. So this one I'll say 150 from the left and maybe 550 from the bottom. And it may kind of appear off screen before it starts dropping into the scene and that's okay. Uh, let me save though every time I do one of these and I'll do one more okay 
Uh, again, using the drag and drop with the Alt key down to duplicate. Grab it by the handle at the top. Carefully drag it. And when you see that blue line appear below, drop it. If you're not confident with that, just type in the SP under here and it will shortcut it as well. So the last set of uh, coordinates will be 250 by 450. 450. Okay, let's save that and test that. But let me just repeat what we did here. Uh, when an enemy gets hit, it sends a message to this custom attribute that we created under the game tab called killed enemies and it adds one to that number. So once that number is three or higher, it triggers this series of instructions. Now this is held inside of the hero where the uh, raising of the number behavior is actually inside of the enemy. As you can see right here, and it goes along with the two other commands to destroy in the play sound once the actor is killed by a bullet. So let's go back to hero. And uh, one more thing I should do here is reset this back to zero once we've done this. Otherwise it will only work the one time. And I'm going to go change attribute. Again, which attribute? The killed enemies game attribute. Attributes game killed enemies to zero. So that's a reset, if you will. So once we've generated the three new actors, we set this back to zero and the whole thing starts all over again. Now, I don't know that this is gonna work until I test it. Fingers crossed that I didn't make any mistakes. Here we go, play. But this is why we test every time we make a change. Okay, so there's my sound. Let me just kill this, kill this guy this guy there they are so it's totally working and you might want to finesse it so that they don't all die if you're sweeping across but regardless it's it's completely functioning and the rest is just sort of uh, preferences on how difficult you want to make the game okay so those are the main stuff now we do have two scores that we want to keep track of one is how many enemies we've killed and the other is how many times did we get hit by an enemy and we're calling that health okay so let's create another actor um, we're gonna need to create three new actors two for the uh, text boxes if you will for the scores and one just as a decorative backdrop to put behind them so I'll start with the decorative backdrop and I'll just call it backdrop okay i'll go down to my actor tab uh, i guess i'll give it a color here something in the blue department dark blue royal blue okay and i'm just going to drag that onto the stage as a static element and size it once i get up here Okay, so very simple, just like I said, just a decorative element. It's no problem to stretch it past the borders. In fact, it's probably better because then it goes edge to edge like that. All right, I'm just going to save that quickly and get on to the good stuff, which is the scorekeepers. Now, to keep track of the two different scores, we're going to need, again, to add a custom attribute in the game for each one of those. So why don't we start with that before we even create the actors? I'm going to go up to my game tab under attributes and we have one we've already created we're going to create two more all integer so integer i'll call this one score and i'll create one more integer and i'll call this one health keep them easy to remember health and score again i'm saving okay so i've got Two other attributes think that can hold some information to keep track of the two types of scores that we are using so now let's apply those we'll create the actors first put them on the stage and then we will create the, the elements to actually affect the scores so the first one i'll call 
display score and we'll get that one underway so I'll click on the actor tab and let's just uh, go into the prototype here into the backstage and add some display text elements so display text and I'm gonna introduce a slightly different technique for combining static text with um, dynamic text I'm gonna start by just setting the alignment to the left and this will be the static text box so I'm gonna call it score capital S colon I'm not gonna add the dynamic text here but I will set the color to white and I think we'll just leave that like that so the way to get the dynamic text is I'm gonna shift it over on its horizontal position and I'm gonna create a second text box here so display text here's where I'll enter the dynamic information which will be the score so I'll get that through the editor over here attributes game score okay hit my checkbox very important to hit that checkbox so this will display the score now if I was to show you this all on top actually let me change the font color and the alignment as well so font color align to the left if I displayed this they would stack on top of each other so let me show you that well actually maybe I need to drag it on the stage first <laughs> I'm just gonna drag it from here to, to here and speaking of that let me just resize it and actually make the background transparent okay so I can do that under color alpha uh, but I'm gonna click away from it here I'm gonna click away for a second and click on display score here uh, I do want to affect it inside of its prototype so I don't want it selected on the stage Let me try that again with the color alpha double click it set it to zero so this is referring to the background so now that white should th uh, should throw <laughs> can't talk now that white should show through that's a tongue twister here we go but as I predicted uh, that zero is sitting right on top of those letters so we need to know how to shuffle that guy over so that's done through the horizontal position and I'm going to try 100 pixels over and we'll see where that puts it and it's a little trial and error but let's see where that goes that's actually not a bad guess um, maybe pull it back just a little bit but that was pretty reasonable so let's pull it back to 95 Hit my tab key try that and maybe I'll go back to 90 Hit my tab key for that Hit play yeah and that looks good to me so there we go so that's a slightly different technique using two display text behaviors to combine static text with dynamic text all right let me definitely save that and uh, let's actually affect the score before we move on to the health and final box here so I want the score to go up every time a bullet hits one of these enemies I could put it either in the bullet or the enemy but I think I'll track it inside of the enemy either way it will get accomplished killed by bullets yeah so it makes sense to put it here so I'm gonna change another attribute and that will be the score so I'm actually changing two attributes every time a enemy gets killed so change attribute which attribute inside of the movie inside of the game rather I keep saying movie inside of the game I've got an attribute called score so I'm just gonna say change it to score plus one so that all has to be done in the expression editor once again so I'll call up that attribute under my game tab called score and I'll physically put in a plus 
one. Then click the green checkbox. Very critical to click that checkbox. Okay, so now my score should be working in theory. Of course, I need to test it. And before testing, I like to save my file. Okay, so here we go with a test. So when I hit one with a bullet, yay. Let's see if it goes up to two and three. So there we go. So we got complete scorekeeping going on. So we're almost home on this. The next thing I want to do is add the health box, which will be the same effect, but it'll be going down in numbers. So let's add another actor here. And new actor. I'll call it health score. Okay, it could be called health status, I guess, but health score. And again, I'll put in the two text behaviors. So display, display text. This one will say health, colon. And I'm gonna make these ones red. Okay, I'll go with the uh, dark red here. At least we'll see how that looks. I may change it afterwards. And I want to make the background for this transparent, so just select it inside of the library. Go down to color. Double click on the alpha value and set it to zero. Hit your tab or enter key. So now it will have a clear background. So I can actually drag this out now and position it. I just can't see it until it's in runtime. So if I want to line it up with this other one, I could go numerically and see what the position is and set that or do it by eye. So let me just hit play. And for a guess, it looks like it's lined up pretty nicely. I'm just going to move it a bit to the left. A little, it's a little hard to read with the color, but uh, so let's see. Maybe I can find a lighter version of red. I'll pick this sort of peach color here. Quick play back. Yes, that's easier to read, so we'll use that one. All right, so I'm just going to move it over to the left here a bit. I can use my arrow keys, actually, when I clicked it on stage. I can just hold my arrow key down to move it. That keeps it on the horizontal. And I'm going to add another display text down here for the dynamic text. And we'll just shoot it over by 90 pixels as a starting point, since this word is in similar width to the word score. So display text, all right, let's pull this up a bit here. So I'm gonna delete that static text and go to the expression editor and call up the health attribute under game, health. Hit my uh, green check mark. Okay, so just the positioning now. So I'll, I'll try it at 90. I will also actually set these to a line left, so that actually might mess up my location. I probably will have to relocate it. Yeah, and 90 is not enough, and I'm also going to move it over, so maybe 100 for this one would be good. I'll also change that color to match. Okay, and click it on the stage, and with my right arrow, I'll just push it back over here. Save it. Test it. Okay, so I do like the look of that. That's all good. But I'd want it to default to a 3. I want that health score to have a 3 when it starts. So I'm going to go over to my game tab and change the value of the health value here from 0 to 3. Okay, so let's just save that and we'll test that quickly here. All right, so now it defaults to 3. And the last thing I want to do is that when these enemies hit me, it goes down by one. That'll be the second last. I actually want to avoid it from going below zero as well. And I'll show you that after we start bringing the score down. So I'm going to attach that score feature, I guess, to the uh, enemy. So I'll click the enemy over here. And just drag this backstage up higher here. And okay, so actually, no, I want to attach that feature to the hero. Sorry, when the enemy hits the hero, it brings the health score down. So we'll actually put that inside of the hero. 
Let me go over to my actors here, hero. And to my actor tab. And I'll just drag the prototypes up here. Okay, uh, I'll create a new rule. And I'll call it health drop. And when there's a collision with the actor of type enemy, we will deduct one from the score from the health. So let's just go change attribute. Yeah, I drag this even higher up here. Which attribute? Under attributes in the game, we have an attribute called health, and we're going to go and change that to health minus one. And we have to do it all in the expression editor. So attributes, game, health, and then I'll manually type in minus one, and that deducts one from the value. Hit my green checkbox, save my file, and test it. Okay, so when I get hit, you see the health going down? And it's going to keep going down. And it keeps going. So what I want to do is I don't want to go into the negatives. I want it to stop at zero and also stop the sound at the same time when it reaches zero. So you're kind of in limbo at that point. So I've got a nice elegant solution to prevent it from going below zero here. And it's based on the condition where we check our health. We go and check our health inside of the uh, game attribute. If it's greater or equal to one, execute this lowering of the score. Otherwise, it won't do anything. So if it goes to zero, it's no longer greater or equal to one. Therefore, it will no longer deduct from the score. So let's try that. We'll add that condition. Attribute. If under attributes, game, the health attribute that we created is greater or equal to 1. In other words, once it goes below 1, it no longer is greater or equal to 1. I'm going to hit my tab key here. Therefore, it will no longer do this deduction. Let's give that a quick test. I know there's one more tweak we need to do here, but let's just check that out here. Play. So watch the score. 2 one zero and it's no longer going down but it's still making the sound and I would prefer if it no longer made the sound when the health was no longer going down so it's just a little change I'm gonna make here uh, originally we had hit by enemy to generate the sound when we started the movie so I'm actually gonna delete that and I'm gonna put the condition the do along with the scores therefore if it's this condition is no longer being met. The sound will no longer play. So let's just delete that. So that was sort of temporary. I'm deleting what I called hit by enemy, which is actually a rule that was generating the sound based on the collision. So let me just highlight that, hit my delete key. But I'll add that condition or that behavior under the health drop here. So it is a play sound. And we'll just go, I think it was bump one. Let's just try that here. Yeah. And let's see if it stops working after we get past zero. There you go. So it's a little more true, I guess, to the fact that nothing's happening anymore when there's that collision. Okay, so just a little tweak. I added the bump sound, play sound, under the do, under the condition that we are equal are greater or equal to one to make these things occur. And I believe that concludes the lesson. So let me just do a full test here. I better save. Hit the play button. Okay, so if I can start deleting. You have the two different sounds. So my score is one, my health is two. Um, I'll let my health go down to zero again just to test that. Okay, and then I'll shoot this guy out of the sky. My score went up. I can shoot this guy and three more generate. And the whole cycle continues every time I kill all three from that one set. So this is what I'd like for you to build. 
zip up your project folder when you're finished and hand it into the appropriate assignment inside of Blackboard. All right, there we go. Thank you.